Randy, tell me about the bike project. Okay. I'm gonna get a shot of it here. Look over here. It's a bicycle. All right. And of course, all the safety equipment on a bike is mandatory. Go healthy riding equipment and helmet. This is an electrical source. This battery charged through this port here, which I have in this backpack. Um, it's real simple to use. You just uh, take the um, charging unit and you and you plug it in. It's real, real easy. See how so that, you that can plugs actually... that plugs into here, and then it plugs into a, a power source. My power source is um, sourced through wind energy, so this runs on wind energy basically, uh, converted to electricity. So I turned it on, and then up here on this, I turned it on. Uh, see the different colors. What this says is that I have a full power load inside the battery right now. I rode it over about two and a half miles from here and hasn't consumed any electricity yet. Um, uh, the mechanics of this uh, device are stored in this packet here. This is the electronics and etc. And the front wheel is adapted to be a power pack, uh, so it accelerates. Right here. Uh, this wheel is uh, what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, okay. That. Um, has juice in it from from right here. This cable comes up in, in here. It ends up in the battery. So the juice for the front wheel comes from the battery. Now it, it accelerates, and look at the handle here. It acceler accelerates in the same fashion that a motorcycle does. So uh, I'll lift up the front end and you watch the front wheel. I accelerate just like it's a, a motorcycle and see it take off? Oh yeah. That's juice. Now that's a lot of power and it's gonna burn out um, tires real quickly if I don't be careful with it. Mm -hmm. um, and so that runs the, the, the front wheel. The back wheel is run off of the pedal just like uh, it were a regular bike. A regular bike. And so you coordinate pedaling and electric. Okay. okay. Uh, like um, today I needed a little extra power because I have so much stuff in my backpack. Say heavy stuff. I needed some extra juice to get up over the hill uh, by YSU Stadium. And so I actually had to do some pedaling to stay at top speed there. Okay. But, uh, it seems to be about 25 miles an hour, I think, which is way too fast for this. I never go that fast. Now, who designed and built the bike? Uh, this was built by um, Mattis, M-A-T-T-I-S, and um, he said he'd build one for other people if they wanted them. So it's like a private mechanic, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion is if you're interested in having a bike like this, that you go online, you look at what's out there, and decide whether you want to get your own one built it to the specifications that you prefer. Fantastic. So, yeah, it's got uh, safety equipment includes a, a mandatory blinking white light on the front. I had to okay, buy that actually. What, what's the white light for? Uh, that's for safety. Let people coming at you know that you're a bicycle. Oh, okay. See how, okay. how much more visible that is than, mm -hmm. um, than just a bike coming at you? Yeah. It shows you that someone is there. And the same thing is true for the back. That's the other uh, light there too that does the same kind of thing. Okay. That from the back, when people are coming up on you, um, they're much more likely to see that than not. Okay. Especially at night, which and I try not to ride at night. It's not a good idea. <clears throat> so it's big enough for a bumper sticker, which I have on the back. Got it. I love that bumper sticker. <laughs> <laughs> so people say, "Well, you drive a gas car, don't you?" And I say, "Not today." Right. Not right. today. And all I have is the present moment. Mm -hmm. So in the present moment, I run off of uh, uh, wind energy. I eat raw stuff out of the garden that I'm going to do right now um, off from the organic stuff that I picked. Right. And so uh, shut off the bike so I don't consume too much energy. Now, a bike such as this would have some impact on uh, one's carbon footprint. Too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, what I do is I, I um, fantasize about the fleet miles per gallon that I get out of the vehicles that I have. Mm -hmm. And so I have a truck, a little Ford Focus, and an electric bike in my stable, in my fleet. And when I use the bike, instead of coming to the garden in the truck, which I usually do, I've cut my uh, imprint uh, significantly. From a positive energy source of wind to a negative energy source of fuel, of uh, fossil fuel. So, yeah, and I can do a lot of things on the bike because I carry the right equipment. 
uh, going to the garden. Check now out you can these actually berries. charge on the road, right? I, anywhere I can plug in, I charge. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. Yeah, so I I, right now, if there were an outlet here, I could I could plug in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the garden and I'm going to harvest some of the stuff that is bicycle uh, compatible. Um, uh, I, what I did this summer was that um, for the the lots that were abandoned, I took the plants that were left over and mm -hmm. I stuck plants in abandoned spots. And so that's that's what I'm going to go do now to see if I can't find some food. That was left now, over. real quickly, could you tell me again what you were telling me about picking the berries? Oh yeah, um, I'll sh actually show you. But these are, I pick them into a container that's the size uh, of a pie. That's a, that's how many it takes to make a nice pie. Great. So, and that's yeah. exactly so, what's other, going to happen with them. Exactly. Right? Yes. Other people would mound it. I don't do that. I like it that way. So there's lots of crispy crust available, and in, in with a um, uh, a blackberry uh, inside. Now, there's in this recipe for blackberries. There's no sugar, and there's no white flour. Great. Uh, the, the only sweetener that's added to these berries is a little bit of um, date sugar. Date sugar. That, now that date sugar is um, uh, at a different level on the glycemic index as other sugars are. So it's more of a, a, a fruit than it is a sugar mm -hmm. because it's just basically coarsely ground up dates to add as a, as a sweetener. Raisins do the same thing in some dishes. You can use raisins, bananas, and dates to make things sweet if you're addicted to sugar. Now, can like you I use was. date sugar in things like coffee and tea? I've, or never, just for I've, I've never tried. I don't know. I okay. just I just bake with it and sprinkle it on my cereal in the okay, morning. Okay, but they're good for really, all baking. Yeah, when I have really sour berries in the morning, like these black, some of these blackberries would be, I will sprinkle a little raisins in with it or some date sugars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so this will be uh, a whole grain crust with no oils on a glass uh, bake sheet, uh, glass um, pie pan, and um, everything in it will be. 100% organic. It will be sugar-free and it will be um, a simple carbohydrate-free. It will have none of that processed shit. It will be all healthy. It won't be as sweet as most people like it, but I don't care. I pour some milk on it, um, almond milk or uh, soy milk, and have it in a bowl like I did when I was a kid and I love it. Anyway, now, I, that's actually... We walk and chat, walk and sure. That's actually... Um, an acquired taste. Yeah. Well, your taste buds acclimate to the diet that you have. Right. People right, say right. I could never get away from meat. I thought that once upon a time, and I'm so far away from meat, I barely know what a cow smells like. Yeah. Except from the shit that I put on the garden. Yeah. And I used to work at dairy farm. Back in the days when I was stupid. Um, Back in the days when you were stupid. Yeah. You Back in the days when I was stupid and thought that was okay to do. I don't anymore. Um, yeah, these are these are some of the volunteer tomatoes that I put in this year. Check this out, you'll like this. Um, that's what a groundhog does. See the groundhog teeth? Oh right? yeah. Yeah, he chomped that tomato. Look how beautiful that would have been in. Mm -hmm. on my, I would have made. I've been making sandwiches with fresh coleslaw and um, tomatoes, and uh, it's it's good shit, man. Oh jeez, yeah. Shit. One year I lived on tomato sandwiches oh. coming out of the garden. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the key is to make them tasty. I use salt uh, and pepper and uh, other spices on my sandwich. And every once in a while, when I crave it old style, I'll have some vegan eggs. I don't do too much. I don't do too much of that because it's a processed oil, which is not really good for you. It's not real food. Mm -hmm. it's, fla it's flavoring. It's not food. I know that. You know. I try to use it. Now, what is that again? That's vegan eggs. Uh, it's much better than regular mayonnaise because it doesn't have. Any um, animal excrement in it? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it does have. You mean dairy? Yes, animal excrement. Dairy. <laughs> I, I call dairy animal excrement. You can call it what you want. Uh, Just for clarification. Yeah, uh, those of you who are sensitive about that, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> get over it. You're wrong about eating that shit. You know, you are. What you should be eating is a whole fruit, plant-based diet. That's what you should be doing. You right. listen to the science that says that this is the, what you should do. You should not listen to the fucking corporations and eat all the crap that they've got for you. Put in a, put in a tomato plant, you know? Go to the farmer's market and buy some organic stuff. Raccoons uh, been over here too. Yeah, one, two, three, four of the tomatoes. Five. He's getting his share. 
Well, we have hit our time with this video. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye.